In the repair shop today, Julie and Amanda make a familiar diagnosis. When the stuffing drops, old bear syndrome, really nasty condition. On a battered but beloved old friend. Got another one. Go on then. Personality disorder. <laughs> And an unusual wedding album requires the kid glove treatment from Brenton. They're, they'll be very, very frail. These slides are 60 years old. Yeah. You don't have to knock them very hard to break them, I can assure you of that. But the barn's first arrival is Claire Collier from Cambridge. She's brought along a sweet reminder of her childhood for the attention of clock restorer Steve Fletcher. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm Jay. Nice to meet you. And you uh, are? I'm Claire. I'm okay. Steve. Hi, Hi Steve. Yeah. That sounds like a clock in there. It does. Good that. guess. Right, OK, tell us about it. Um, this belongs to my great-grandmother, Mabel. This clock would sit on her mantelpiece. And when we were kids, she had a vase on the top. You can see the ring marks where she's left the water oh, damage. Yes. Oh, yeah. And we would go upstairs, put our pyjamas on, get ready for bed, and she would always point to the clock. And behind the vase on the clock, every single time we came downstairs was oh, a yes. pair of uh, chocolate Claire sweets. Yeah, yeah. There were always two, one for me, one for my sister. And it was her way of being naughty. <laughs> We'd already brushed our teeth. Oh, I see. We knew it was naughty, and I kept the secret until ten years ago. <laughs> my parents had no idea that she was doing it, and my mum was delighted when I told her this story. She thought it was very her. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, you can you, have that later. I'll, I I'll... will definitely have these later, both of them. Well, both? I'll have, okay. Yeah, I'll have both. Yeah, more. <laughs> that is Jay. <Jane. laughs> Can you, can you remember it uh, ticking and striking? And yeah, firing? it has a beautiful five-bell chime. So it, it chimes on every quarter of an hour, and yeah. it's, you always knew what time it was, even if you weren't in the room. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a lovely sound. Where's this clock been since, since then? Um, sadly, just on a shelf in my hall, and it sat there for nearly 25 years. Oh, my word, right. My grandfather gave it to me when him and my grandmother were getting older. So has it not been working in that 25 years? It was broken when he gave it to me. So I'm really hoping <laughs> that's what you guys can do for me <laughs> and that I can hear that chime again. To me, it's happy memories of my childhood and the naughtiness of my great-grandmother, Mabel. Na naughty 90-year-old. Naughty 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an ambition, you know. I can <laughs> hopefully, I can get to that as well. I'm very excited about working on this. I'm sure we'll be able to do oh. something. Well, Claire, thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. And I know I'm leaving it in good hands. Thank yeah. you. The best hands. Yes. Okay. Right, goodbye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm really hoping Steve can get my clock working again. That's, to me, the most important part. If they can get the case looking nice and all the wood shiny again, then even better. So, what's wrong with it? I can see that the, the, the movement is very, very dirty, so I've got to look into that and see what's wrong with the, okay. the, the mechanism. Right. The case, I uh, will have to hand that over to uh, Will, I think. Yeah. I think you'll have to encourage him to uh, put a couple of sweets in there. So, do you need to get the mechanism out first before Will can do that? Yes, absolutely. You... Yeah. OK. Just let me know, and then I'll take it over to Will. Perfect. Cool. OK, all right, okay. thank you. What I need to do is get the mechanism out, have a look at it, and uh, see what I've got to do to it. There you go. These are really nice Art Deco form hands. Very nice. This is the, the gong unit, so... That's the sound that I need to get the clock making, the sound that Claire remembers. I'm hoping it's just that it needs a jolly good clean. This is a very, very dirty clock. You can see a build-up of really sticky, gungy oil. It's absolutely filthy. I'm just going to use this pair of 
uh, modified pliers. So there's a small slot filed in one side here so that I can actually fit it underneath this unit here, press on the top here, and it actually pulls this off cleanly. It's very, very silly, but it's so satisfying when I, when I just click and it comes off. It gives me a real satisfaction. Right, go and put this in the clock cleaning fluid. Next, John McMuldrock from Liverpool. He's hoping bear repair jewel, Julie Tatchell and Amanda Middleton, can restore a furry friend with huge sentimental value. My name's Julie. Uh, and I'm John. Amanda. So what have we got in here? My mum's teddy bear. Uh -oh. oh, look. <laughs> My mum got given it when she was a baby, when she was born. So if this is your mum's bear, how come you have him and you've brought him to us today? Okay. Um, my mum passed away two years ago with ovarian cancer. OK. Um, she was a big part of my life, she really was. So can you tell us a little bit more about your mum? Joan was her name. She was a carer. Really? Yeah. Oh, she was a big sorry. charity sort of person. She used to raise money for the MS Society, which is what I suffer with. OK. Right. She, um, did this teddy bear's picnic. What it was was my mum dressed up as Rupert the bear, Basil. Oh, wow. Spent the day marching round, you know, seeing kids and stuff like that. At the end of the day, she took off her helmet yes. and it looked like she'd just had a shower. She'd so sweated hot. that much. It was, it was in the middle of summer. Oh, my goodness. But she just giggled her head off. She's nothing like that with the you know, phaser. Oh, Aww. she sounds wonderful. Oh, she, she was. She really was. <laughs> Sounds like you were very close. Very close. She was my mum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and one of the last things that she did, because she was always thinking about me, was in a funeral, she wanted people to not bring flowers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. She wanted donations to the MS Society. And that choked me up to realise that she was still thinking of me then. So he was obviously very special to your mum. Yes. It's always lived on the edge of a bed. And now he's yours to treasure. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to, you know she's not here, but give something back to her. Yeah. yeah. I, I would just like to see it roughly as far as you can back to where it was. Yeah. Did you play with him during your childhood? Yeah, I did, yeah. That's probably half the problem why his legs are falling apart. <laughs> he gets loved to bits. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair way of putting it. Yeah. It? So what does he symbolise to you? Something that my mum used to hold and love. It's it's something that's there. That's still my mum. Wow. Yeah. That you can Wonderful. hug as well. Yeah, we can. It'd be an absolute honour to do it for you and and for her memory as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll try not to keep you apart for too long. I hope not. <laughs> Thank you so much yeah, for bringing him. Yeah, we'll let you know when he's ready. Brilliant. Thank Lovely. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Take care, John. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye now. My mum got the teddy bear when she was a baby. It was a best friend when she was younger, best friend when she was older, best friend when she passed away. It will be a big tribute to my mum that it's getting done. I do hope it will do her proud. How you doing, ladies? Oh, yeah. Hi, okay. Jay. How are you getting on with John's bear? Oh, you ain't got very far, have you? No, we haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> We're deciding what's the best course of action. What are you going to do? Because he's hands, feet... Well, yeah, there's quite a lot to do. The other thing we have to do is... Um, this is Rexine. We can't buy that, so we're going to have to make some. So that's... You're going to make your own? Yeah, we are, yeah. And that was on the hands and also on the feet on as the feet. well? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear that clunking inside? Nice. He's That's lost his growl. He's it's lost his well growl there. You're learning so it's you much. I've learned from the best, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> OK. So do you guys need me to get you anything? You will need to get us some of the cotton material that we need to make the Rexine. OK. And dark brown okay. acrylic paint. Oh, right. 
It sounds like you guys have got it under control. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah? Thanks, <laughs> right. guys. Jay. No problem. It was lovely to hear John talking about his mum, Joan, though, wasn't it? They obviously had a really close yeah. relationship. I think so. And the amazing work she did, fundraising. Oh, he's got a mixture of wood, wool and K-pop in there. So we're going to pull all this out. So here comes this growler. Fabulous. Oh, dear. We're not going to be able to mend that one. What we hear is no longer the sound of the growler as the air's pushed through the reed, but we can get replicas for this. So I think this is a case of let's get him all apart and then we'll be able to clean him. Already cleaning up are the parts of the Art Deco chiming clock on which a rebellious old lady would hide sweets for her great grandchildren. When I'm when I'm going through each piece and cleaning it, I can actually give it a quick inspection as well. So there's there's an advantage of handling each piece. But clock cleaning fluid won't help with the wooden case. That will need the craftsmanship of Will. Very well. Hey Steve. Oh, nice clear bench. <laughs> well done. Good timing. Look at this. Lovely Art Deco clock Look case. At that. Lovely. Look at the inlay. No. What would you like me to do, Steve? If you could uh, work your magic on it. It's very dull and there's not much life in it. Is it a clean and a polish? Yeah. And. And. Claire always remembers her great grandmother hiding a chocolate eclair on top of the, the clock. Okay. And I wonder whether you could do something to go on top. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Whilst I'm cleaning, I'm sure I can come up with something. Leave okay. me. Cheers. So this clock needs a thorough clean and a good polishing. I've got a cleaning solution here that I've made up. You can see that the dirt that's sitting on the surface is obscuring the uh, lovely grain of the wood. I'm going to use a um, shellac polish uh, to sort of build up that lovely depth again. Just a quick clean and a thin coat of polish. You can already see the lovely difference. I'm going to leave that to set. I'll probably put on five or six coats. Once that's completely dry, then I can think about making some sweets. I've now cleaned up this clock, and it's come up beautifully well, actually. What I'm now going to do is polishing all the, the pivots of each wheel. Uh, these are quite rough, so I need to pop them in the lathe, po polish them up, so that the clock should work really efficiently. It's really important to have a nice, smooth surface, because if it's rough, what it'll do is just wear the bearing out straight away again. So there we are, this pivot goes into this pivot hole here and it's really, really loose. And what I need to do is pop new bushes in, which are basically a little circle of brass so that the, the pivot will actually sit into the hole nice and snugly. I love this old tool. This is quite an accurate cutter and what it does is open up the hole to slightly, slightly smaller hole than the diameter of the bush, but actually when I push the bush in, um, it, it'll actually hold it really, really tight. So I just put it into position there, and then I just push it in like that, and there we are. This pivot should be nice and snug. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Just another 20 holes to do. Paying homage to naughty great-grandmother Mabel, Will's dreamed up a design for a sweet topping for the clock's case. 
Well, I've glued up um, a piece of walnut and two pieces of oak. Once I've turned it up, it's going to end up looking like the shape of a twisted sweet. My work on the lathe finished. All I need to do now is carve in that final bit of detail. It's looking more and more and more like a chocolate sweet. I'm going to brush and polish on there. That's going to give that nice sort of candy wrapper effect. When I get it all back together again, you know, you know you're on the final run, and I can't wait to get the, the chimes all working nicely so that Claire can hear them again. Sounds evoke loads of memories, and, and the sound of the chimes of this clock are going to remind Claire of her great-grandmother. And I know she hasn't heard the chimes for a long time now, so I can't wait for her to, to listen to them. Hey, Steve. Oh, doesn't that look good? Lovely, right? You made a stunning job with that. Thank you so much. I've actually turned up to chocolate eclairs there. Wow, they're brilliant. Oh, my goodness. That is amazing. You are very clever. Yeah, uh, thank you. Look at that. Well, I can't wait to hear it working. I know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No worries, buddy. Next into the barn is Angela Hodge from Rochester with a treasure trove of memories. <laughs> Hello. Hello. She's hoping silversmith and vintage camera enthusiast Brenton West can restore their magic. So what have we got here? This is my mum and dad's wedding viewer of their actual wedding day. They got married in 1958. Instead of an album, they had um, slides done instead. So all of these pictures are all of the wedding? They're yeah. all of Mum and Dad's wedding. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm with that. Oh, wow, that's quite cool. Hold on, why is there two pictures, then? Because it's like a 3D effect. You just pop the slides in there. The two pictures become one picture. Right. And you feel like you're actually in the room with them. It is, is it? It is that good, considering it's 60-year-old. So tell us about your Mum and Dad, then. What kind of people were they? Lovely. Yeah? The perfect Mum and Dad, yeah. Really so. were. My mum used to work in a canteen and my dad used to be a, a bingo caller in Whitstable. No way. Yeah, so most of my Saturdays were spent at the bingo. Right. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, dad passed away when he was 58, so my mum had, like, nearly 30 years on her own. Wow. So, yeah. This is all I've got of the wedding. It just means everything to me, as you can imagine. Wow. So these are really so important. So these are really important. It's about eight slides, I think, okay. in total. Wow. What's actually wrong with it, then? Normally, you just press that button and it all lights up. But it hasn't got a battery, it okay. hasn't got a bulb. Some of the slides around the edges, they're all worn right. away. One of the slides has actually got a crack going across here. Ooh. That's just tape over it, yeah, holding it together? Oh, is that... Perhaps my dad would have done. <laughs> taped it up that in the it, isn't it? So how come you want to get this repaired now, then? Originally, I wanted it repaired for my mum. She suffered with dementia. Right. With the dementia, she used to pull hundreds of cupboards out and just leave them on the floor, everything. And this was amongst it. So how long was it in the cupboards, then, do you know? Oh, it's probably been in the cupboard for a good 20, 30 years. Yeah. yeah. So how did Mum feel when she saw this again, then? Well, she just wanted to see it straight away. <laughs> oh, she said, that's my wedding viewer. Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. So she, she sat down and... Yeah. Um, Got it out and had a look and the smile on her face just to see her wedding day. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was amazing. Yeah. Unfortunately, she passed away in August. Oh, sorry to hear um, So I'm going to do it now for my granddaughter. Okay. She used to call my mum Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you call her Gigi? What's that? Great grand Gigi. Great -grand. Oh. It's Gigi, so. 
to be able to have that memory of her yeah. as she used to be would be amazing. Yeah. To hand this down to my little granddaughter when she's old enough to appreciate it yeah. will be just lovely. Mm. That's nice. Mm. Angela, thank you for bringing it in. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You take care now. Bye-bye. It's more than a viewer to me now because it's memories of my mum and dad. To see it actually working properly, absolutely magical that will be. Well... This is a really nice 3D view. It is, and I've yeah. never seen one like this before. <laughs> um, I can't wait to see these pictures through it. So what you've got to do to get this working then? OK, so I've got to see whether the wiring is OK, get the bulb and battery in it, yeah. and these replace the glass on, on some of them, and this tape is deteriorated and gone all sticky. Yeah. I've got to get that off and replace that it's and bit. at the same time be really, really careful because these slides are 60 years old yeah. and they'll be very, very frail. What thickness is that? Is that I, think, really I, I, I think that's one mil glass. Yeah. That is so thin and okay. very, very hard to get hold of. So if you could find me some of that, you'd be a hero. All right, no problem. Well, I'll go on and look out for that one mil glass okay. and then I'll let you get on with this. OK. All right, Cheers. see you soon. 3D, or stereo photos, invented in the 1800s, resurfaced as a household craze in the 1950s, when 3D movies started to be shown at the pictures. Working with this vintage machine and its unique slides is right up Brenton Street. It's a, a fascinating way of, of looking at a picture. It brings a picture to life. It would have been a novelty in 1958, and I can see why they opted for it. The slides need a lot of work doing to them to clean them up. And I'm going to start on that now. Now that the tape is off of this side of this one, I've got some degreaser here. It's a very mild solvent. And I'm just going to gently wipe off the residue of the glue. I've got the other seven to do, and then we can start to put these back together. On their workbench, in the quest to repair a beloved bear, Amanda and Julie have fully dismantled his battered body and are giving the 65-year-old fur pieces a thorough clean. So we'll just leave him to soak. OK. Yeah, definitely. While Ted's bits are in the bath, Amanda can craft him some replacement paw pads. When we took Ted apart, we were able to salvage this one little piece of old Rexine. Rexine was a fake leather, especially to use on teddy bear paws and feet. Sadly, there isn't really any call for Rexine nowadays and we can't get it anymore. I think it was replaced with sort of vinyl and things like that. So we still try and recreate that sort of vintage look with our homemade Rexine. And to do this, I, I'm mixing acrylic paint with PVA glue. What I've got to do now is coat the surface of this cotton fabric so that we can make new paw pads for Ted. We basically just paint it on, really, work it into the fibres. I think there's a possibility I may just have to darken it slightly, but um, it's not a bad match. What we're doing here is we're finding all the weak areas, um, make, putting internal lining just onto these weak areas like this. So I'm, I've done a little pull pad on the end there, it's just so that when we attach the new Rexing piece on the other side, um, we've got something strong to sew it to. There are parts, especially around the nose here, that need supporting, but we don't want them to be too thick and bulky. So I'm going to use something here. It's called a uh, silk crepe lining, and it just supports it and allows you to stitch into it. So I'm going to turn his head in the wrong way, lay it over the top. When we stuff the nose again, it will hold its shape. So tiny, tiny little stitches like that. And, yeah, he's going to look a real handsome chappy, I think. I'm really pleased with the way that this piece of rec scene has turned out. I'm really enjoying doing this work for John. 
He, he was just so enthusiastic about his mother when, when he came in, and it just gives that extra sort of meaning to what we're doing for him here now. heel in and then I just have to work my way around with all the other pins until I'm happy that it's set and square. His head is all nicely stuffed um, and he's looking a little bit more like a bear again now. I can pop his mouth stitch in now and we'll be able to start seeing what his face should look like. This is my favourite part of the job is actually Putting the face back, giving him his personality and, um, yeah, bringing him to life again. We've got names that we, we give certain jobs. If their stuffing's gone a bit flat, we kind of call it bear tox cos we're kind of puffing them up a bit. We have old bear syndrome. We have old bear syndrome. When head south. Yes, yeah, when the stuffing drops, old bear syndrome, really nasty condition. Um, got another one. Go on, then. Personality disorder. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. And I've got the eyes here. But all I've got to do is push this long needle through to the back of his head, like that. And then I'm pulling these threads so that the eyes sink into the head and cause like a, a bit of an eye socket, really. He's looking really sweet. Yeah, really pleased. How you doing, ladies? All right? Yeah, Hi, Jay. Let's have a look. Oh, bless him. <laughs> he looks good, doesn't he? He does, yeah. You He's... always do a blinding job. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jay. He's waiting on his <laughs> new favourite bits. <laughs> I love new growler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is quality. That's going in in a minute. So, it is getting cold out there. What do you reckon? Shall I get him, get him a little something? A little scarf, maybe? Instead of a ribbon? Instead of a ribbon. I do like the idea of a scarf instead of a ribbon. Yeah. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> Across the barn, Steve is hoping the Art Deco clock has got its voice back. He's now reassembled the chiming mechanism that's been silent for over a quarter of a century. Now that sounds nice. Lovely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely lovely. So I've put new leathers in the hammers as well, so that's made them nice and soft. And that's what gives it that rich sound? Yes. So when it's inside the clock, yes. it's going to sound even louder? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You haven't got much more to do on this, have you? I've just got to put the mechanism back into the case. All right. And then it's done. Because I can't wait for Claire to hear that. Right. I'm going to let her know she can come pick it up. OK. Cheers, Steve. Claire's returned to the barn to collect the clock that holds happy memories of her mischievous great-grandmother who would hide sweets for her at bedtime. Most importantly for me with the clock is to hear it again. Oh, that would be so good. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. And you. Right. So you're excited to see it? Yes, I am. I'm very excited to see it. Right. Um, I will let you have a look at it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That looks amazing. I will just swing the pendulum as well. <laughs> Little wooden sweeties. So Will has done the case and made these sweets to they're, put on top for you. They're fantastic. You can't eat them? No, I don't want to. They're, they're absolutely beautiful. I know that you are very excited to hear the chimes. It, it was the sound in the house, that the mixture of the chimes of the clock and just laughter and happiness in the house. Would you like to hear the chimes? Yes, please. Oh. That's the sound I remember. That's... 
sounds so lovely. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Many, many happy memories will be replayed every time I hear it. Fantastic. Right, if you'd like to take the sweets, I'll pop it out to the car with you. Thank you. I feel quite emotional. I didn't think I would. It, it looks beautiful and it's so nice to hear it again. That sound is ingrained in my memory from my childhood. That clock is, is going to keep those memories alive. Now I can hear it again. Inside the barn, the 3D slides that formed the 1950s wedding album are now free of all the old sticky tape from previous repairs. Brenton will need even steadier hands for his next task, replacing the broken glass. Jay's managed to get me some one millimetre glass. It's half the thickness of greenhouse glass. You don't have to knock them very hard to break them, I can, I can assure you of that. And now I've got to stick these together. Unfortunately, most tapes aren't archival and the glue deteriorates and you get a mess. I'm going to use an archival tape. It's a book binding tape. I make photographs which are sealed behind glass similar to this and they have to last for a long, long time and I don't want any air getting in there contaminating them. So this is the, the tape I use. There's no acid in it and it doesn't need that sticky residue. It won't fall to bits. The slides are looking really nice, and now I've got to fix the slide viewer and we can see what we've got. I found a bulb that will fit in this bulb holder. The battery that fits in here is an old type of bicycle battery, and this is one of them that I've managed to get hold of. I've noticed in here there is a wire that's come off that's meant to be soldered to this contact, so I'm just going to re-solder that and hopefully this will, will work then. It's really important that the things that you're soldering are clean. So I've got a fiberglass pen here and I'm going to use that to clean the terminal before I solder it. So this is the gas soldering iron and just heats the tip up so I'm not going to set fire to this like I would if it was a flame. Right, get that going. So that's soldered on there really well. Now I can put the battery in and see if it works. On the opposite workbench, the beloved 1950s teddy that supported a loving mother in her lifetime of fundraising is in fine fettle. We've almost finished Ted now, which is quite exciting. So I'm just going to pop... Excuse me. I'm just going to pop the growler in. And then uh, I've just got to pop some more stuffing in there. there. I'm really looking forward to showing John his bear again, and I'm hoping that he's going to be everything that he wants him to be. You ready to go over to Julie? There you go then. Was that a yes? I think it was. It's just absolutely wonderful to get to this point where we know the last um, few stitches. And then that'll be him done. Yep. Oh, perfect timing. And look what I've got for you. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that is perfect. Yeah. Of course I do. Oh, very Absolutely stylish. Fabulous. Is that all right? Yeah, I think that's great. It looks the part. So how much more you got left to do? You're done. He's done? You've that's just it. done the finishing touch. Oh, wow. Let's have a look. <laughs> and he's talking to me. I'll tell you what he's saying to me. What? He wants John to come pick him up. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'll let him know. Absolutely. All right? Yeah, that's no, thank great. you. Thank you. Right. Eager to be reunited with the bear that was his late mother's lifetime companion, John. I've missed the teddy bear, to be honest. Never thought I would, but the teddy bear is important to me because it's part of my mum. I'm looking forward to getting it back. I really am. Hey, yeah. Hello, John. Welcome back. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you again. How are you feeling? And you. Anxious. Okay. And what are you hoping to see under here? 
a bear with legs and, stuff. <laughs> yeah. and with pads. Yeah. yeah. So, are we ready? Do it, then? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. My God. He's got a smile. He's got pads. He's got legs. <laughs> <laughs> You. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's gorgeous. If you give him a little tip, <laughs> he was a bit shy. <laughs> that was a bit nervous. Try again. <laughs> he had a growler in his tummy. <laughs> but that's, that's how he would real. have sounded. Yeah. My mum would listen to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she would. Oh, oh it's unbelievable. Funny. <laughs> I think he's pleased to see you. Yeah. He's looking I'm pleased to see him. Bless him. Bless him. I'm over the moon with it. I really am. Thank you. No. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. And lovely to meet you as lovely well. Lovely to meet you too. And bye bye. Rupert. Behave. Come on, Rupert. Let's go. Thank, Thank you very much. John. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> <laughs> he's still chatting. I'm over moon to have the teddy bear back, I really am. As soon as I heard its growl, I could feel my mum and blown away. It's, it's hard to say it in words, really. I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. The 1950s 3D viewer is almost up and running. But first, Brenton needs to adapt the bicycle light battery he hopes can power the new light bulb. Now, this battery has two terminals on the top that would hit this piece of wood here. These need to be bent around like that so that they hit the two contacts that are on the sides here. That should work. He says. Because that's in there now. Just need to put a bulb in and see if this works. Well, there we go. So that works, that's lovely. I'm just going to put this lid back on. And now I can test it with a slide. Wow. I'm seeing Angela's parents getting into their wedding car on their wedding day. It's almost like I'm standing by them. It's absolutely incredible. Can't wait for Angela to see it. Hoping to enjoy the photographs of a late parent's special day, Angela's brought granddaughter Elsie, who used to love spending time with her great granny. Elsie calls her Gigi, don't you? I'm really hoping that Brenton's been able to repair it for me to see my mum and dad brought back to life after 18 years of not seeing it together would be amazing. Ah, hello. Hi there. How are we doing? Hello, I'm fine, thank oh, you. Right. Hi, yeah. Right. This is Elsie. Oh, right, Elsie. You say right? hi. Oh, she's going to be shy. I'm going to shy today. <laughs> How are you feeling? Excited. Oh, yeah? <laughs> very excited to see it. Because you said to me that it's like you're there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It is that good? Yeah. Well, it was. <sighs> OK. Well, hopefully you will like it. Oh, wow. Look at the slides. I've never seen them look like that. No? No. Oh, they look wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. But the real test is going to be in actually looking for it. Shall I have a look? Yeah. I'm all excited. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this oh. moment. Oh, wow. That's, that's my favourite one as well. Getting in the car in the rain. Oh, wow. It's amazing. It's brought Mum and Dad back to life. Not much quiet. <sighs> I'm very proud to be their daughter. Yeah? Yeah. So this just... It brings my Mum and Dad back to what I remember all them <laughs> years ago when I was a child. Wow, that is proper 3D. 
I want one of these now. I know. <laughs> it's just amazing. Can I look at another of one? Of course you can. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So is it nice to have these kind of memories of Mum then? It's lovely, yeah. Mum never had an album, she only had this. Yeah. It's just so special. Yeah. She would have loved to have seen it like this. Mm -hmm. To sit down on a chair, cup of tea, <laughs> get the viewer out and just reminisce of the old days of a beautiful wedding day to a lovely husband. You know, there's so many happy years together. And the pictures are really beautiful in there. Yeah. It's as if you are in there. Definitely. I can now just get that out whenever I feel like it and, and have a look. There you go. Thank you so much. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me. Thank you, Elsie. Nice to All meet right. you. <laughs> oh, she's never shy. She's never shy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There you are. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Bye bye. You take Thank care you. Now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> it was fantastic seeing the 3D effect again. Yeah, I feel like I've got mum and dad back, which is lovely. Seeing Mum, she looked absolutely stunning, and so did my dad look so handsome on that day, just as I remember them. When Elsie gets a little bit older, I'm going to hand it down to her, so she's got memories of her Gigi.